Tufik, thank you so much, and thank you to the In Defense of Christians for allowing me to speak here today. It's an extraordinary gathering as we witness the terrible tragedy that our brothers and sisters in the Middle East are suffering from. Christianity's oldest, most treasured communities face a deliberate campaign of extermination. In this context, Congressman Fortenberry and Congresswoman Ishu persistently have pushed Congress to pass a resolution declaring ISIS's action to be genocide. I thank both of them for their leadership. The genocide resolution, together with the groundbreaking report prepared by IDC and the Knights of Columbus about the atrocities in the Middle East, pushed the State Department to call this tragedy what it is, genocide. It's funny how your mind works. When I was preparing for this uh, today, I was thinking about uh, when I was a child going to, school, uh, to church with my mother. I must have been seven or eight years old. And I remember hearing about King Herod's atrocities and how they went through Bethlehem killing all the young boys because he wanted to kill the baby Jesus. And after church, I remember asking my mother, could this happen today? And she told me, Danny, no, this can't happen. Nothing like this could happen nowadays. I said to her, why? And she said, because we wouldn't let it happen. I couldn't un understand it then. I couldn't describe then as a young man what I felt. But I believe now it was probably relief. And today, the world is led by decent men and women who embrace freedoms and oppose oppression. That's what we were taught. Today, the greatest arsenals civilization have ever known are wielded by elected officials, not tyrants. Today, modern law, founded in the principles of property, privacy, and liberty, governs society, not the whims of a dictator. Still, when you consider the long history of civilization, we look back in horror at the unimaginable pain mankind is capable of inflicting on itself and it's each succeeding generation wondering how people stood by idly as barbarians destroyed innocent life and property. At the same time, even today, entire cities tremble under the brutal reign of a disgusting, perverted ideology. Even today, ISIS forces Christians to live under its distorted brand of Islam or face a violent death. This is not the world that my mother described to me. This is a world in which a tyrant like Herod might thrive. Evil people are co-opting an entire religion to achieve their barbaric ends. I'm grateful that no one in this room is standing by idly. Right now, we have a chance to continue to build upon the work of the genocide resolution. Today, I'm introducing legislation calling upon the president to strengthen our efforts to cut off ISIS's financing and to redirect frozen assets to rebuild the communities devastated by ISIS's genocide. This legislation, along with the additional legislation that Congressman Fortenberry will introduce to create a safe haven in Iraq, are part of the larger effort to protect Christians in the Middle East. I'm proud to have such a distinguished partner in this endeavor, and I look forward to working with all of you in the coming months in the coming years. Thank you for having me today.